Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1958 Chevy Impala 125 scale Revell model kit number 85-4419, and it was previously released as the Lowrider. Uh, but this kit is a skill level 4 for ages 12 and up, and has a suggested 5 hours of assembly time. There's 136 pieces molded in white, clear, clear red, and chrome with vinyl tires, metal axles, and pins and screws. The motor is highly detailed and needs very little to make it contest quality. The chassis is well detailed and is in multiple parts. The interior is crisply molded with separate door panels and high detail, including decals for the seats and instrument panel. The body has an opening trunk and hood, and you could open the doors too fairly easily. All the chrome trim is added on, not molded in, like the other versions uh, on the market, and the tires have white wall inserts. Decals for the body only include a red pinstripe, aside from the stock emblems. Overall, the dimensions of this kit are 8 inches in length, 3 inches wide, and 2 and 3 sixteenths inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours, but as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For the majority of this build, I use Model Master liquid cement, but other adhesives include super glue and white glue for parts that require strength or clearness. Tamiya acrylic bottle paints are used through a, a spray uh, airbrush and occasionally I'll use a rattle can spray paint for things like primers etc. But um, we start a construction with the motor pieces as you see here. You can assemble the block, heads, intake, oil pan and front cover then paint the motor orange with an aluminum transmission. The oil filter is blue and the starter is black. The belt is a rubber color and it has black pulleys. The fan is black and so is the distributor and the exhaust are steel. Now add the valve covers, the distributor, oil filler tube, and carbs to the top of the motor. Add the belt with the alternator and the fan to the front of the motor, then install the exhaust manifolds. Moving to the chassis, remove the copyright insignias from the chassis, you can see them in the red circles there, and paint the chassis pan flat black with a semi-gloss black frame rails. Uh, the front suspension is a semi-gloss black and it's installed. And the rear suspension is semi-gloss black with steel springs and your favorite color of shock. Install the springs and suspension and then the shocks. Then paint the drive shaft steel and install that with the motor in place. The exhaust is steel colored and with aluminum mufflers and that's installed last. Now paint the wheel blacks aluminum and insert the white walls into the tire if you want to use the white walls but they can be used as black walls as well just turn them around uh, to give the tires a worn look though press and roll the tread on a sheet of fine sandpaper and for the front tires add the metal pin into the rim back and insert the rim back into the tire and glue the rim front to the rim back and add the spinner for the rear tires just insert the rim back and glue the front rim and then the spinner into place for the rear suspension, use the metal axle and slide that through the axle and insert a tire onto each end. For the front, insert a metal pin into the upper hole on the suspension. Now turn the rolling chassis over and make sure that it sits evenly on all four tires. To start on the interior, I painted the floor pan and engine bay flat black and the seats white. The trunk floor is flat black with the body color wheel wells. Now assemble the radiator and fan shroud and paint those flat black. Firewall is body color outside and flat black on the inside. Now detail paint the parts on the firewall. And once uh, dry, install the firewall and the radiator. The battery is black with gold caps and installed in place. I decided to carpet my car, so I put a little bit of that craft flocking on top of some white glue over a base that's similar in color. Assemble the front seat and then paint the front seat white with aluminum side mounts. 
Then the rear seat is white with the package shelf being body color. Now I did my door panels with the white and body color and some silver trim. Now install the rear seat, front seat and the door panels. You can use the decals included if they match your paint scheme. Pull out the parts for the dash and paint the dash body color with silver trim and the instruments are the decals provided. The column and the wheel are body color with some silver trim and the pedals are flat black and steel. Now insert the dash into place and the slots on the interior. Prepare the body for paint. You'll have the main body, the hood and the trunk. And as the red arrows indicate, there's some black marks on the body that are highlighting some very strong mold lines that will need to be sanded away prior to painting. Use a progression from fine, uh, you know, medium to fine sandpaper to remove the blemishes and be careful not to lose the details on the body. Now spray the inside and outside of the whole car and the parts with a good quality primer that is compatible with your finished color. For my model, I used a Chevy color uh, in a turquoise from the 1950s for this one. And with the chrome on it, uh, it'll give it a real classic look. Speaking of chrome, the best way to achieve this is to use some bare metal foil applications. It's just like tape. You stick it on where the trim is and then you use a sharp ho hobby knife to remove any excess. Now I'll apply the decals to the exterior. Um, they're mostly just the stock body emblems, but I recommend you use some of the setting solution to help these nestle in and, and contour to any details on the body. To give the window glass a clear, crisp look, I always dip the window parts into some future floor polish, then let them wick off dry and install them with some white glue. Turn your attention to the front end and use a, a wash of 50-50 flat black and thinner to fill the grill area and give the grill some depth. Now install the grill, then install the headlight bezels, lenses and trim into the body, then add the hood trim. Now install the hood and the trunk into the body, then insert the interior into the body and then slide the front tabs on the chassis into the holes on the body. Now use the screws and screw the chassis into place on the body. Red arrows indicate their locations. Use some slow setting glue to put the radiator hose in place on the motor and then add the radiator to the engine bay and attach the radiator hose to it to finish it off. Here is all of the remaining chrome trim pieces that need to be installed to the body at this time. I decided to add custom license plates to my model, so I printed out my logo with using a color printer on some white paper, and then I just put a piece of clear tape over the top and trimmed it out for installation onto the license plate holder. Final assembly of the car is just adding the rear bumper and tail lights. Insert a red light into the four trim rings and install it into the inner and outer spots on the rear tail light areas. Then use clear lenses in the trim rings for the center spots. There's not too many parts left over for this kit, but because it was a low rider and a convertible in the past, there will be some extraneous parts left over. Some amps and wheels and uh, the interior trim for the back seat. This kit was a breeze to build. It was good fit and finish overall, and it harkens to a die cast version, which it really is a conversion from that. So it's a real simple and easy to follow build, but it got some real highlights. The interior is great, especially if you can use the seat insert decals with your color scheme. And the chrome trim that is separate really stands out on the exterior. Also, that exterior had some great uh, detail to it after you remove uh, the mold line. So overall, the kit was real nice to build. Uh, once again, the interior was a highlight. The motor's pretty nice, although not extremely detailed. It looks good, and if you put some aftermarket wires on it, uh, it'd look really great. The chassis is solid and looks well detailed. And assembly overall is just straightforward and easy to do. If you want a, a weekender, this will fit the bill. We hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step review, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss any future reviews. And don't forget you can find us on Facebook 
at www.facebook.com, Right on Replicas, or our website at www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks again.